Here we go again. I'm going to just read this not to actually try to make commentary because I get mixed up when I tr start going off at angles. <laughs> so I just read this item that I wrote out. And the animal farming industries have the power to not just cause the worst atrocities to animal life all over the world. They can also prevent the news of the environmental damage they cause globally. As shown, and additionally they hide the science of health benefits that are obtainable if animals are removed from their diets. I saw this happen with smoking, and they are, and they employed the same, and animal farming employs the same people who defended smoking that denied and delayed the truth when allowing millions more people to become ill and die when all the evidence was clear for more than 30 years before government started to act. What is happening with the animal industry defence is on a far bigger scale of illness and human death than smoking as well as the environmental and animals, land destruction biodiversity loss, mass animal and plant extinction, seas and oceans poisoned and fished empty. All could be easily changed and prevented and much reversed if all simply stopped consuming animals. It will also need protest of government and businesses as the issues of eating animals are not just the consumption but also the other issues uses of animals and the land they are farmed upon. United Nations report in, in 2018 implicated animal farming as as bigger a bigger threat to the climate causes and situation as it is, than the whole of transport, cars, ships, lorries, everything, all of that, farming causes more pollution. That's animal farming that causes more pollution. We only have to consider that as a population, as humans, the 7.8 billion of us, as humans, we include in all our gardens and all parks and everything, well, the, the built up areas of our towns and cities and villages and everything like that, the industrial and whatever, we actually only occupy around 6% of all the land on earth, maybe less than that. That's, and if you, when you think of all the cities and towns and cities all over the world, when because we live in them, that seems to be a, a heck of a lot larger area that we're actually occupying. But it isn't. We are only occupying that small area, for, for our actual living area, what we're actually living in. The far bigger use of all land on earth is farming. The actual food that comes to us, when you think about what you actually eat, uh, your say your main meal, most of it is not meat. Meat is part of it. It's a small part of it in general. But the meats that you have through in snacks and things like during the day, that they all add up, so that's a little bit more. But most of the food that you eat, probably around about 70% of the food you eat every day, at least, if, you, if you're a regular meat eater, at least 70% of the food you eat is vegetables, grains, and all everything like that. So you're already eating 70%. So as a meat eater, just that 30% that is the actual actual animals that you are eating 
adds up. Well, let's look at that vegetable, that 70% vegetables that you're having. So for vegans and vegetarians, obviously that's a larger, larger part of the diet. But for just the general population, which is the majority, the majority that eat meat, that amount of land for just the vegetables, for vegetarians, vegans and all humans, is only using less than... 20% of all land just for all that vegetable all that vegetable which is the major part of everybody's diet 20% less than 20% of all land that is actually farmed the other 80% of farmed land is that 30% of your dinner just that 30% that is that is eighty percent of all farmed land is just that little thirty percent of your food consumption and so what the heck are you doing consuming animals is not good for our planet it's not good for your health and it's definitely not good for any animals 80% of that land we do not need to be using at all well taking some weight say taking away the 30% it would still you would there would still be a slight increase so it would be probably around about 25% of land that we would actually need to grow the food that we would need to consume but it's certainly, certainly a, ooh, good, ooh, well, good seventy or eight, well over, well over half of all the farmland we would not need to be using anyway. But way over of all the, when you look out and you see all those fields out out there with all crops all over them and everything like that, most of those fields are not needed. We do not, we as a species do not need all that farmland so you've got you've you've got the environmental cost of having using all that land you've got our own health cost in consuming animals that we do not need to actually have at all you've got uh, the 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 what well, the absolute horror and terror that we are inflicting upon billions of billions of animals all over the world every year that in itself is horrendous when it's only providing 30 percent of your meat dinner meals or whatever as they are that is absolutely disgusting and we should all be disgusted at it. I really do wish that I had known all of this long before. But just to add another dimension to that. That absolute waste of cost, waste of life, waste of land and everything. The other, the other absolute biggest cost is that we are subsidizing that land because all that land that we're farming for animals does not pay for itself we are not paying in fact meat eaters are not paying the price to farm all those animals instead governments force us all including vegetarians and vegans to pay for that land to give you meat the government has to subsidize that land they have to pay they create more milk more meat than they ever need as well and they end up having to buy it off farmers with our tax money <laughs> it's 
there's there really is only one possible reason well some sort of possible reasons why governments support such a waste of absolute money and that is the fact that having farmland spreading for miles and miles across most of the world like i say around about half of all ice free land on earth is practically farming well in, in including our including our occupation our occupied part of the land it is probably about half of all the ice free land with us our occupied part and the farming as well half of all the ice free land on earth is actually practically an industrial because of that's basically what farms are they're not natural they most in fact nearly all farms now are not natural apart from a majority in some of the third world countries everything everything in britain is an industrial farm and by that i mean i mean that a biodiverse wildlife and plant life does not exist on in just on british soil alone on over, on 80% of the land 80% of land in britain is farmed so we outdo most of the rest of the world and that's why for biodiversity we're in the, about the 180th odd country in the world for the lack of diet biodiversity we're right down near the bottom over 180 countries have more biodiversity than we do <laughs> and that's because of our farming practices the herbicides the pesticides the hunting the control in the shooting of rabbits other mammals the calls of badgers the uh, that is that is why our biodiverse area is less than the 20% of the land that is left because of even most of the 20% of the land that is left is still managed as well if whether it's through forests and things like that where where a lot are plantations so again wildlife is limited even in those areas biodiversity is practically dead on in britain by almost there are pockets of biodiversity that biodiversity is still here but the smaller the pockets become the more and more the actual land actually recedes itself without because of biodiversity needs um travel between all areas of the world to be able to continue with the biodiversity or at least all areas of any land mass so if we pocket areas in britain of biodiversity a lot more of the biodiversity in that pocketed area will die out because of the animals and the the vegetation cannot spread to mix with other populations and vegetation to continue biodiversity so <laughs> this is quite that's quite a concise if uh, basic of what the situation is please we need to stop animal farming it is absolutely a necessity to end animal farming
we all have because of our culture, how we're brought up, how we're brought up to understand things, to just like myself, we were brought up to understand that it's okay to harm and kill animals. I sort of believed it even though I hated it, uh, but still sort of believed it because I couldn't work out, just like you can't work out, how we could not harm other animals, how it, it just seemed like what we are culturally, cultura, culturally expected to believe and to understand it's called a normal needed and necessary normal this normal is to say because we've already always done it normal needed because they say we need that nutrition from those animals necessary because we need to control the land I'll come back to that part about that I was getting onto about um, part of the reason that um, government in regards wanting to push the subsidy they want to subsidize the land um, part of that and what it has always been is that by having most of the land farmed it makes it easier when they want to expand towns and cities and whatever or put on new roads and things or whatever that if more of the land is just farmland there is less objection if it's going through farmland if if you been built onto farmland if you put a road through farmland people are less likely to actually object partly on the basis that uh, most farmland doesn't look as nice as land that has a lot of trees, bushes and lots of vegetation around and in a sort of nice rolling area sort of thing. You've got if you've got flat fields and then it's 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 by far easier. People just don't object most of the time when it goes through those Look now when like this HS two that is being that done now. The real objections and real actual activism and opposition is only in those areas where it is affecting uh, ancient woodlands, places of extraordinary natural beauty and everything like that. That is the only places where absolute quite a big opposition is there. But of course for most of the parts of where that where those that rail is going, there aren't those things, there aren't those actual areas, there aren't those nat natural the ancient woodlands there isn't they are just those farm fields that most for most of the part the rail is going through. So because there isn't opposition on most of the route itself, they find it easier to railroad through those ancient woodland parts because of that's the only areas that they've got to concentrate on actually policing people to sort of make sure that it goes ahead it's, so that's one part of it the other part we've having farmland is that should we want to create a quarry for the say road building or other types of building or a coal mine or other fossil fuels again the farmland makes it accessible without major objections all the places where where quarries and things that get objections to them are in places of again natural extraordinary natural beauty or when it comes to certain 
specific preserved areas that that are come, become under threat. <laughs> you you can see how why farming is then subsidised because of those that it, uh, then there is another reason as well but that sort that means that expensive projects can get done expensive projects can get railroaded through as just like hs2 railroaded through the countryside because massive areas are farmland and get no objections the other part is uh, that you know that we're borrowing between two and three trillion pounds and borrowing from the world markets to run our country part of that is down to the way J in the gross domestic product is made up so land value is part of gross domestic product so towns, cities, the road structures and everything like that, they they are make the land the most valuable. That is where the land is most ex expensive. So it becomes part of a commodity. So it is not it's not just the production of goods that we make and everything like that. It, that's all part of it. But the value of all the land that everything that's made on and what we live on that is all value as well so cities towns are, are the most valuable parts of our countryside and the country itself but of course farming if you've got most of the land farmed as well that is got because it is farmed that has added value as well so say an acre in some parts of the country i think the the richest acreage for farming is around about ten thousand pounds an acre or something like that, maybe a bit more, maybe more still, uh, but generally the any farm in the least is worth is between two and three thousand pounds, maybe a bit more. There's farming land, and that includes hillsides where sheep are farmed and things like that, thousands of pounds. Whereas in if those areas were not being farmed, so this is the reason for the animal farming if those areas are not farmed with animals the value of that land drops it drops but that's still not a good reason to to keep animals it's not a good reason to be us eating them it, because the 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 how unwell we are when we consume them, surely we should worry about that. We should worry about that. That, that we are. It, it's not. It just, it's our pure health, our own health. Yes, our health to us individually, but uh, it's the biodiversity loss as well, which also has an effect on us as well. <laughs> Everything's in such a everything has connection. It's that everything has connected in every way. So we need to stop consuming animals. I I keep put making these sort of videos, and I know that I don't get many views and everything like that maybe they probably will do over time because of people come over this come across these by accident and everything like that uh, but as long as I've got a voice out there put a voice out and giving people some ideas there is a chance that somebody might might make something of it I should make something of it more myself, but I'm not the sort of person to be able to do that. I can do it by this, in this way, but again, I'm not the sort of character that that 
is a popular character for many of you to sort of want to listen to this uh, and of course what I say is, a, is a, an added sort of barrier to you accepting my message or myself I can put it I, that's I, I've, I've gone on for 25 minutes 25 minutes now and um, I think I ought to sort of stop it. I can come back again to the, this sort of thing again in future. And I probably will. Um, I, need to, <laughs> I need to add some sort of fun and at least some uplifting parts and, to do with it as well. And maybe I should leave with the uplifting parts in that as bad as everything is, in the way that I've put things here, it, there is a hope when I've when I've explained it, and there is a hope that if you take the message on board and you make changes yourselves, that we could do better. I would hope so, But we need to make it that change faster than what I do, than what I'm doing it, sort of thing. I would love to keep on talking. Um, maybe I should just stop here and just start another video and maybe post that a few days later. So I think I will stop here now. We can make a difference, we can change things. We just have to get, take the message. Watch Cowspiracy. Watch What the Health. Both are here on YouTube, free to view. Look at nutritionfacts.org. I will add the, leave these in the description of this video as, as resources to go and investigate what I've mentioned here. Um, Cowspiracy is quite old now so a lot of the actual information is a bit out of date. I think at the time the actual amount of animals that were being farmed was around about 56 billion whereas now at this present day it's between around about 72 billion animals all over the world. So in the short time since the documentary was made probably about I think I can't even remember when it was made now but probably about 10 years or so ago that is that has been the increase of about 20 billion nearly well not quite 20 billion animals 20 billion more animals being bred into existence to be killed horrendous horrific just the living conditions alone is is beyond anything imaginable to us sitting and just ignoring what what happened what is happening out there there you go that's i think that's quite a good um part for a little piece lots to go to go on there I've not always been clear in why I'm saying this because of obviously I'm trying to think about it. Parts of what I'll say maybe a little bit out here or there, but basically it is all the truth. It's what is actually happening. We need to change. We need to do better. We must evolve to do better. We can evolve to do better. Whether we have time to do it, that is another question indeed. But while ever we're still here, there is a hope that we can try to do it. Please listen, understand and know that just one person making the change is a big benefit. But we must all change to make it work. Cheers.